Hey friends, Steve Guttenberg here, and I am the audiophiliac. So, I'm kind of in an analog groove lately, uh, and it started um, maybe six months ago when I reviewed the Kuwetsu Blue Sky, and great cartridge, absolutely stunning um, piece of work. Um, you know, you, you might... The cynical among you might assume that Coetzee is just a name and they just kind of, you know, whore the name around and it's a big deal and it's got prestige or allure or something that makes it magical. But you know, when you actually get down to it and listen to it, it's pretty freaking amazing. Um, now, I had a Coetzee back in the day, maybe mid-1980s, I had a Coetzee Black which was pretty special, but in those days I went through a rapid changing of cartridges all the time. I had a Monster Alpha cartridges, I had a Kaseki, I had um, a whole bunch of things. And uh, the Koetsu, you know, made a good, good impression, um, you know, back in the day. So anyway, here we are in, in, uh, in 2017 when I had the, got the Koetsu Blue Sky to review, and it was it was like Technicolor. It was like taking drugs. That it made recordings sound better than I thought they were. It just brought out juice and guts and life and beauty. And it was it was just a thrill. Every time I played a record with the Koetsu, it just it made me happy. It pulled me into the music. Everything was terrific. But then the call came from MoFi, and they said, "Time for." to Koetsu to come home. So I put it in this little wood box, sent it back, and I needed a cartridge. Now, Michael Trey, my old friend, is a setup wizard and genius, and he actually had mounted the Koetsu for me in the first place, the, the blue, and I said, well, how do you follow a Koetsu blue sky? What, what's next? And he looked around and he said, oh, I got something that might work. And he brought me a Kaseki Purple Heart. Not the current version, which I think is called Purple Heart NS. This is an original Purple Heart from, I guess, the 90s. Yeah, I think early 90s. And it was rebuilt by Peter Lederman at Soundsmith. And it has a ruby cantilever. Um, anyway, Mike mounted this uh, Kaseki Purple Heart. And it started happening all over again. It doesn't, it doesn't sound like a Koetsu, but it's kind of like it in that it just dredges up music from those grooves in ways that other normal cartridges don't. <clears throat> I mean, the whole Koetsu, Kaseki, let's say rivalry goes, goes back. I actually owned the Kaseki Blue back in the day, around the time that I had the Koetsu Black. But now that I'm back with the Kaseki, you know, it's up there, man. It's just... I was playing this record, actually, last night. This Ventures record. Now, I bought this record at a record fair maybe three or four years ago for $2. And uh, it's, in, it's in amazing condition. It's an original pressing, so I assume it's from mm, the late 60s. And... Um, I love the production on this record. It just is so amazing. The reverb and the guitars and the drums and the, it's just so, it just draws you in. And it's amazing to think about that when this Ventures record was made, no one could hear it the way I'm hearing it today. So I'm, by the way, the, both of those cartridges, the Koetsu Blue Sky and the Kaseki Purple Heart are on my um, SME Model 15 turntable. And the phono preamp is a Parasound JC3 Plus. Um, so those parts haven't changed. Um, but anyway, this Kaseki, it seems uh, more dynamically alive than the Koetsu Blue Sky. Um, and the bass is fatter and juicier. It's, it's, it's lusher and livelier than the Koetsu. I think the Koetsu, by comparison, is a little more controlled and refined, and this cartridge is more guts. It's just dredging up stuff that was happening at the session that was unheard before. And the other record I was playing recently is this one. This is Eno's Music for Films, 
and um, it's very eno. It's very spacey and phasey, and it's a world you enter when you play this record. It's it's very analog. Both of these recordings are are analog, and um, you just feel like you're the Eno record you're just entering Eno's mind or something you know this one and um, well all of his records of, this, of that period of the 70s like Before and After Science and Here Come the Warm Jets they're sonic soundscapes they're, yeah they're soundscapes that you can lose yourself in and with a great cartridge with a Koetsu or a Kaseki or a lot of other great cartridges they just pull that out of the crew. It, it just blows my mind that a diamond tracing a vinyl spiral can pull so much out of there. It doesn't seem possible, really. When you think about the, all of that information, all of that music, all of that sound um, that's coming back through time, through a diamond tracing a group, Shouldn't, shouldn't be that good, but it's really, really good. Anyway, a little trip down memory lane, a little adventures in hi-fi for you. Um, this is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and I am your host, Steve Guttenberg. Not the actor from Police Academy. This is the other Steve Guttenberg, the audiophile Steve Guttenberg. Anyway, I think I've said enough for today. My name's Steve Gutberg. I am the Audiophiliac. Please come back often, watch these videos, and I'll see you soon.